Today I want to share with you the five pieces of gear that I use most on my personal cameras. I'll quickly explain their functions and why they've earned a spot on this video. As a videographer, buying tech and new gear is honestly a must. We're always looking to elevate our shot and just take it to that next level. I have gear I use daily and I have gear I use like yearly. So with that being said, let's go over these five pieces of gear that I truly think are a good investment and just won't end up collecting dust in your office. The first piece is a lens, but it's not just any lens. This is the Sigma 24-70 f2.8 art lens. This bad boy rarely leaves my camera. I have the Sigma 16-28 f2.8 on now, but that's just because I like this wider shot for my office. If I had to leave my house with one lens for the day, no questions asked, it's going to be the Sigma 24-70. It's like a thousand dollars cheaper than Sony's G Master equivalent lens, and it almost does the same thing. Minus a couple external features, you're really never gonna notice a difference. It's argued that the G Master is sharper, but unless you're shooting content for like a stadium screen or a billboard, I don't think you'll ever see the difference. It boasts very quick autofocus and tracking, an 18 centimeter focus distance, a manual focus ring, 82 millimeter external threads, and a very nice travel case that is included. By the way, none of these items I'm mentioning are sponsored or a brand deal by any means. So my opinion is not influenced at all. If you would like to support the channel though, you can use my affiliate links down below in the description. This lens is definitely the highest price item of the five I'll be sharing, but it's just that good and truly the most used item, so I didn't want to avoid mentioning it. The second piece of gear I'd highly recommend for you to get for your camera, no matter what camera it is, is a cage. Not only are you protecting your camera a little bit more, but you're adding so many mounting options that you won't even know what to do with all of them. If you plan on rigging your camera out to any degree, you'll definitely need one of these bad boys or girls. Either way, I don't judge. For my A camera, I went specifically with a small rig full cage coming in at only $70. It's equipped with a ton of quarter inch thread holes, two additional cold shoe mounts, a NATO rail on the side, Arca Swiss quick release plate on the bottom, and a very convenient magnetic flathead screwdriver stored in the bottom. I will say most cages come with similar features, so there's not much that separates this one from the next. But with that said, I'm just a huge small rig fan, so that's why I chose this one. The third piece of equipment is honestly just as important as your camera, and that's some type of audio source. They say a viewer will put up with bad quality video, but will most likely leave with bad quality audio. So with that, I'm recommending the DJI wireless mic set. What you will actually receive is the DJI charging case, which acts like AirPods and charges all the devices when stored, two transmitters, one receiver, two dead cats, an audio jack, a few different attachments for different devices, a USB to USB-C, and of course, another cool travel case. The main reason I'm recommending these mics specifically is because I find myself using them in more situations than any of my other audio sources. So I would say they're the most versatile and definitely the most portable. I'm obviously using this Rode audio setup that you see now for my studio filming, and that's just because it works out better in this environment. But whenever I leave the house and I'm gonna do something that needs audio, I'm bringing the DJI wireless mic set. Right now they're being sold for $250 for the whole kit that we just went over. And for the value, you really can't beat that deal. And not to mention, it takes up a tiny footprint in your camera bags. The fourth tool I'm gonna mention goes hand in hand with your lens. And that is a variable neutral density filter, also known as a VND filter. In simple terms, this is pretty much a pair of sunglasses for your lens. Without it, it's gonna be very tough to shoot outside and manage your exposure. It will allow you to keep those beautiful colors your camera produces, as well as keeping that f-stop as low as possible. If there's one thing we don't wanna sacrifice, it's definitely that juicy bokeh. I've been using the KNF B-Series 2 to 400 stop, it's definitely one of the most budget-friendly VNDs, but I can tell you from experience, it does the job. If you're new to VNDs, give this one a shot. You'll notice a drastic difference when shooting outside. And again, it's also nice to have a VND or any type of filter on your lens because it's just another layer of protection. Also something that's skipped over very often is using a VND indoors. I have one on my camera now because with all the lights in here, it can help me change the scene just a little bit more. 
The fifth and final piece of equipment is something I couldn't live without now. It's a tool that truly took my shots to the next level. It's hard to master and it's tricky to set up when you first get it, but when you do, oh boy is it worth it. It's the DJI RS3 gimbal. To be honest with you, at first, this was one of those items that kind of just collected dust in my office. I love handhelds and I didn't want to start using a gimbal as a crutch, but after tons of practice, I really don't like leaving the house without it. I definitely don't rely on it, but I do love implementing those smooth shots in a lot of my projects. The RS3 is a three axis gimbal with tons of awesome features. A fan favorite is the auto unlock and lock system. Once balanced, you push the power button and it's ready to roll or ready to rest. It's got a very responsive touchscreen that is honestly comparable to an iPhone almost. A tripod mount that's included, a battery life of about 12 hours, and most importantly, it can hold some serious weight. The Sigma 24-70 we talked about is a pretty hefty lens, and this gimbal operates it just fine when it's on. It does come in at around $550, so it's not cheap, but if you are in the market for a gimbal, I would do your research on this one because I can almost guarantee you'll love it. Also, this extension pole that you see on it is only $15 on Amazon, and it's an absolute game changer. I have a much better range of motion, and it's honestly just more comfortable in the hand. And come on, for $15, look how cool this thing looks. Now that you guys have an idea of some cool gear that you'd find useful, make sure to subscribe to the channel to see my next video where I'll be covering my favorite vlog setup. Anyway, in the meantime, check out my studio tour that I just recently finished up. You can see some more cool gadgets in that one. Thanks for your time, y'all. It's truly appreciated. I will see you in the next one.